like the confluence of all of our public transportation and active transportation in the city. Buses, light rail, bikes, heads all across this bridge. This bridge is special. It's creating a safe and healthy option to being in a vehicle. The views from the middle of the bridge are great. It, it adds just a whole nother option for loops for recreational riding around town. The best part about riding over this bridge is that it's actually quiet. To see a bridge that is designed solely for pedestrian and people riding bikes and transit is a huge stepping stone and I think it's, I think it's very symbolic. Behind us here is the Tillicum Crossing. It's the largest car-free bridge in North America. This uh, bridge carries light rail, streetcar, and three bus lines, as well as thousands of pedestrians and cyclists per day. The Tillicum Crossing uh, was designed with an inclusive public process. We had a stakeholder committee led by TriMet, the transit agency that built the bridge and the light rail line. So if we were going to have cars be able to cross this bridge, they would have to be off ramps and on ramps on both sides. And it would take up a significant part of the real estate on the landings of both sides of the bridge. One, so it would be incredibly more expensive to have built the bridge, but two, it takes up a lot of the land that is uh, otherwise available for the development that you see here. So there's mixed use development that's gone in, that's taken advantage of the land that's available right at the bridgeheads. In any uh, dense urban area, land is tight, every square foot uh, is precious, and so we wanted to maximize the opportunities for parks, housing and jobs, and public space. The purpose of a bridge is to literally bridge to different places and the value of creating a bridge with the person in mind first instead of just moving cars is really novel. This is a really significant uh, statement of, of Portland's values. Intentionally designing and building a bridge that does not have car access, furthering the goals of our central city plan of having more housing and more jobs close into the central city where we can best serve it with our transportation system. experience the connection that you have with the river and the connection that you have with nature as you as you ride over the Tillicum Crossing really is unique and part of that is that we don't have auto access onto the bridge so that the noise is very low. Because there aren't cars going across the bridge, you don't have the pollution from the cars, you don't have the noise from the cars, and it just absolutely adds to the livability of the area. You hear the train and you hear the buses, but you don't have that din of traffic. You don't have that roar of the sea of automobiles. My favorite thing to do is actually stop on this bridge at sunrise or sunset. It's beautiful. Silicon Crossing is a really amazing bridge. Just the fact that like the lights change color, it's a really nice touch. I, I love being uh, in the center of the spans and looking down at the water. I love looking at this bridge at night where it has LEDs built into the uh, structure so it changes with the temperature, it changes with the level of the water. The Tillicum Crossing is fantastic as a runner. It's a beautiful structure, can run on either side, and there's a wide space, there's not a lot of noise pollution, you're not scared that the driver's gonna honk at you. When I get on the bridge, I think it looks really beautiful when you're riding across it, and there's a different beauty to the up-close feeling of all the cables and the towers, and give you something to stop and look at besides the city and the river. some type of life happening around here. And today is one of those examples of you know, being a part of Sunday Parkways. There's people everywhere. The best part, it was record attendance. We had 32,000 people out for Sunday Parkways. Now, I don't know if they all took the bridge, but I hope they did, because this is really a crown jewel for us. 
Springwater Trail, which is just uh, um, a little bit farther to the south from us here, is another very important connection. That's an off-street path that is used by thousands of cyclists every day. Uh, that is now connected also to the Telecom Crossing, so we're providing um, a really integrated network. You're providing connectivity to other existing trails and uh, transit routes for bikes and peds. You know, the variety of human-powered transit. You know, that connectivity is, a, is what you would want to focus on, and I think this bridge does that extremely well. After the opening of the Tilikan Crossing, we saw ridership on our aerial tram increase exponentially. Um, we saw more people riding their bikes. So we have a largest bike valet in the country right here at the base of the aerial tram. It got so overwhelmed after the opening of the Tilikan Crossing, they had to get more real estate in an adjacent lot and across the street. This is Go By Bike, where the OHSU bike valet were here to park the bikes of students, staff, and patients that come here to OHSU. We're set up to do minor repairs, flat fixes, tune-ups. We park about 300 to 450 bikes a day. The idea is if uh, this many people were to drive in, it would just take an extraordinary amount of resources to deal with their cars. Prior to having the Tilikum Crossing and all of this protected cycling infrastructure, people didn't feel it was possible that they could cycle to the Oregon Health Sciences University to access their jobs, and people are now doing that in the hundreds and thousands uh, per day. Portland receives probably 90 new residents a day. Because of that, our traffic is becoming increasingly more dense. It takes you longer to get from point A to point B. As everybody's seen how congested everything is and complaining about so many people here with so many cars, more than we've ever had before, so I think it's, it's a great sort of symbolic turning point for us as well. It sends a really good message, not only that it's useful for transportation, but that it's a value of making a place and about moving people. Advocating for projects such as the Tilikum Crossing are a great way to keep momentum going, keeping access open for everyone so that they can get to their homes or get to their businesses in a safe and healthy manner. I think a great lesson for cities all throughout America is that uh, this can be done and that you will uh, be able to create a better place, a better functioning environment by making these priorities really clear and, and emphasizing the need for access for people rather than access for cars.